Our story begins in a throne room. Vague compliments. Such an inspiring the camera intentionally avoids showing any of their features. Oh, and first person to boot. Yep, that's probably us. And what a good time to be us it is. We're about to be crowned the sovereign of this entire realm, which, fun fact, the surefire way of being given power over an entire realm here is to have your heart ripped from your chest and eaten by a dragon. A good system. I'd like to implement it here in the UK. Things are going great. That is, until time gets frozen and a disembodied voice starts throwing a bunch of unreasonable demands our way. Thy will? Thy will, you fuck off, mate. After being rudely interrupted, we're transported to Dark Souls. I shit you not. I half expected a key to drop down from a hole in the ceiling. Well, looks like we're slaves now. Next, we get to enjoy a little recess. Time for you to get to work. Our wonderful oh. overseer orders us to play with some rocks. We're good little prisoners, so we get right to it. Hey, overseer, look, look. I even built him a cute little rock prison. That's good, that's good, I like it, I like it. Unfortunately for us, playtime gets interrupted by various shouts and screams. What is this commotion? With my trusty boulder in hand, we climb up the slope, where we are met with something truly horrific. Grandma? Sorry, Grandma, but you can't just keep turning people to stone like this. We're going to have to put you down. Can I climb you? No? Alright, I'm just gonna stab you here. Oh, okay, she's not that. After a bit of rough housing with Snake Grandma, she takes herself off to bed for her mid-afternoon nap. We then get a surprise visit from none other than Dr. Manhattan himself. Long story short, this place is lame, and it's time to go somewhere less brow. Oh, you! Get back here! Not today, Mr. Overseer. We have a date with destiny. Luckily for us, our fall is interrupted by a relative of the plot eagles from Lord of the Rings, whom we'll name George. Shoot it down! Though I don't think they'll be shooting anything down anytime soon. We get a nice little look-see at the world we inhabit, title card included. George also seems to enjoy screwing with the locals for some reason. Hi. We like George. That is, until this sack of shit shoots him down. No! And us too, by extension. Rest in peace, George. Pulling ourselves back onto our feet, it appears that our friend is being devoured by spooky red Lovecraftian tentacles. Say that ten times really quickly, and then let me know in the comments if you succeeded so I can call you a liar. He doesn't seem all too concerned. And being too early in the day for Lovecraftian tentacles, we decide to just chill and watch. Apparently, we can find him later on, but I kind of just forgot he existed. We're then greeted by my twin brother. Your fuckers what shot happened? down George! Hey, you got the same hairstyle. You got the same- Oh no. Apparently, I just suck that much at making original characters to the point where I create literal NPCs. Next, we're treated to our first encounter with goblins. No, no, no. The bad kind. Where are you going? I'll not force you to receive treatment. You're off and I'd at least you you think you're going. just run off. Where do you now? think you're going? Where are you going? I'll not force Give me you a to fucking moment, moment would you? Like My insufferable twin aside, we really do have so much in common. It was time to move on to the first camp, where we are greeted by a group of Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. Clearly, very intelligent individuals called pawns. They, bend the you so readily, but then they have a good eye. No. You seek the Riftstone. Do you not? We can take you to it. Being the kind of person who'd never say no to free labor, we humor them and allow them to guide us. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom you would have serve you. We even get to build about our own little pawn. Introducing Steve. Steve, say hello to uh, everyone. Hello, motherfucker. We are arisen, which is supposedly an issue, as apparently. Surely there's only meant to be one arisen. There can only be one. Big news indeed, and not our problem. Two extra meat shields acquired, and we're off out into the wilderness, where we're met with the usual RPG stuff. 
rescue NPCs, slay some monsters, slay some monsters. Now our current main objective is to reach the next village. So of course I immediately get distracted and wander off in the opposite direction. Fighting our way up the hill through various packs of enemies, I found myself wishing that this game had a fucking lock-on system. Otherwise, things were going smoothly. Until the unthinkable happens. Who's down? Steve! Guys, we have to rescue Steve. Steve! Where is he? What? What? Steve, stop teleporting! Go, 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 go. Why? Why? I don't have time for you. <laughs> what the fuck? We need to get to Steve. No. Oh my god, two of them are dead. No, 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 no. Steve, Steve. Oh, and the rift stone is all the way back there. Our brave little Steve, taken from us so soon. Anyway, finding a cave tucked away, my curiosity was sufficiently piqued. Nothing too difficult had been thrown our way just yet. What could go wrong? Coming in. I, I was so, so wrong. Guys, look out. There was a strange noise. Oh, Jill, hold them off. Get up, get up. Fuck. Things were not going too well. Our eat before the game over screen can claim you strategy was somewhat working, though it also animation locks us for up to three seconds. Driven by sheer stubbornness and not knowing when to just quit, I decided to have one more crack at it. No! Oh, I move, I move. Yeah, no, that's it. Realising that we were in a spot of bother, I decided to pull off one final, brave and noble act. I ran away, and in the process, saving a life. My own. Unfortunately, however, the goblin decided that I was the tastier of the three meals. I can't blame them, of course. What followed was the most stressful and aggravating retreat that I have ever fucking experienced, as he continues chasing us all the way to the next town. Upon reaching the town, we're treated to a free heart attack, which sums up the last 20 minutes of my time nicely. Now, you've probably heard of Imagine Dragons, so get ready for heart attack induced dream dragons. After having our skin incinerated to well done instead of medium rare like we'd ordered, our heart gets gracefully plucked out. And eaten. And we die. Unfortunately for us, dying doesn't mean we're dead because fucking dragon magic! Waking up in the home of the cretin who murdered George! But at least we now remember how we became arisen. So for now, we'll let her live. After all, as a being destined for greater things, we harbour no ill will towards our future subjects. Just gonna rob you home. I wonder if the game would allow me to just like kill her. Being an arisen seems less appealing by the second, as we can't seem to catch a moment's peace. Would you be willing to accompany me to the capital? We'll certainly get around to that. After acquiring some new meat shields, we get accosted by a funny little gremlin creature before coming across a down on his luck fellow. Worried about his missing brother. Your brave fool said he was going to look for herbs. Sounds simple enough. Many thanks. Oh, it turns into an escort quest. After we've already accepted it. Can we change our minds? Okay, so we're going like right now. Here's a quick little analogy for you. Imagine that your neighbor asks you to walk their dog. You agree. Your neighbour suddenly informs you that the agreement now includes the harvesting of all of your organs. Before you can object, the majority of your insides are now inside an ice cooler. This is exactly the fucking same. We have been tricked! Many thanks. Also, you'll never guess where we're being forced to go. The world works in mysterious ways. Because it's literally where we just fucking came from. <laughs> oh, why? Back through the wilderness. Back kill more goblins. Back up the hill. Back past Steve's site of trauma. Back past my site of trauma. Right into the cause of said trauma. Oh my god, it's the one from before, isn't it? But wait! There's more, because the piece of shit that we came here to rescue has decided to include several wolves. <laughs> oh no! No, why now? Ah! 
Where's the big fella? Fortunately for us, it would appear that Trauma Goblin had tripped, breaking his neck in the process. How handy. With the brothers saved, it was time to see what laid for us over the crest of yonder hill. Oh no. Oh sweet Jesus! Kill him! Come on, come on, climb, climb. I refuse. We're gonna beat him. Yeah? Stab him in the head! How oh, did that miss? Okay, so this is your rage, yeah? Climb up his ass again. Stab him in the head! Get him in the neck! Yes! Ow! <laughs> like, huh? What, you throw your club? Can I get up? Uh, aw. Looking a little bit crispy there, buddy. I know all about that. Bye! Get fucked. One incredibly fun battle later, I cannot lie, we reached a cave atop the hill. After incinerating a slime or two, I had a realization, thanks to my exceptional ability to perceive the world around me. If you look closely, you'll notice that one of the brothers is still here. I just realized, why are you here? Oh. Apparently, they weren't content with simply being rescued and reunited. Unsure about what dangers lurked at the end of the cave, and not wanting to risk obliterating any hopes of a reward, I mean, and being concerned for their safety, I made the hard choice. That's right. Back down the hill, brief detour for some home invasion. NPC gets stuck, but oh, wait, oh god, why? And this wasn't even the first time that this had happened. This game makes me feel a lot of emotions. Back at last. Upon finally reaching the village, again, we are adequately rewarded for our time spent. It's exactly the same. One brief trip to the mental asylum later, we went back to the cave. But nothing exciting really happened, so long story short, our boy Steve got a staff. I'm just going to breathe some copium and say it was all worth it. Because it was about time to stop getting sidetracked and get on with the main quest. Another escort quest, where we once again receive a friendly reminder about the Arisen situation. The Arisen is the lawful ruler of Vermin. Our kingdom sees many pretenders, and they are not dealt with like you. Best hope you're not one of them. Oh, Gregor, you're such a jokester. A few secrets and battles with spooky scary skeletons later, we reach a checkpoint, where we are insulted by our future latrine scrubber. Another pretender, you mean? Something is wrong, however, and it's not just the guard, as the ox cart that was supposed to meet us here is noticeably absent. An ox cart was meant to meet us. Yet, it is nowhere in sight. Oh no. Forced to carry on by the means of our footsie wootsies, our ears are assaulted by a deafening roar. Our screen shaking as a segment of the mountain collapses. The cause? More marks of the dragon's fury. The dragon, of course. What else could it possibly be? More battles? More chests? Means more loot over encumbering you, forcing you to spend a couple of minutes sending each item one at a time to your fellow pack mules only for the cycle to repeat again five minutes later. Random pawns in the wild forcibly striking up conversation with you without your consent. In battle, I shall follow your lead and prioritize support. Thank you, but go away. Every introvert's worst nightmare. One of the meat shields decided Look, to take a dip in the river. Treasure chest. Me and Tiger then decided to see what all the fuss was about for ourselves. 2 out of 10 didn't live up to my expectations. Further down the road, we come across a landslide, which, as hard as it is for us to accept, is impossible to get past. What's this? We're trapped. Don't, don't even think about trying to climb it. Well, at least there's entertainment. One guy, unfortunately, doesn't seem to appreciate this. <laughs> Boss time. With Cyclops number two disposed of, and more importantly, the impassable debris cleared, we had proven undeniably that we are indeed arisen. Proven entirely by us killing a single Cyclops. 
We're then given two choices. Here's the cart now. Do you intend to join us? To travel the road to the capital alone, exploring, fighting, and plundering all the way, or by Oscar fast travel. One cart ride later, and we've reached the capital, and are immediately greeted by this guy from the opening cutscene. A very formal looking fellow by the name of Brandt. Unfortunately, however, he doesn't look too happy to see us. I was informed of your coming would be arisen. A little. angy, even. With zero choice in the matter, we are dragged off for some tickle torture. If you value your life, you will not attempt to flee. Or so I'd hoped. Instead, we are given the big reveal. I beg your forgiveness for my insolence, Your Majesty. What? Surprise! We were the sovereign all along! Though, apparently, not everyone was too pleased about our would-be coronation. Not all celebrated your coming. Your arrival would have robbed the Queen Regent Deesa of everything. Word reached the castle that the Arisen had been found. To Deesa, your Majesty's very existence is not but an obstacle to her own family's continued prosperity. Queen Deesa is a hater. Some might say she is dissatisfied with our claim to the throne. The situation made clear we make plans to meet up later for a couple of drinks. Visit me a night in the tavern. So to me, some things still didn't make much sense. I do have to ask, why are Arisen immediately put to rule? Just because I have these... I hope my subordinates are attending to their duties. Of all my days were so tranquil. Time to explore the capital, only to bump into another little gremlin creature. Consign! Get back here! Can you tell me which way he went? I lie because I'm a badass who tells porcupines to the law. The gremlin creature expresses their gratitude before being yelled at and chased off by a phantom. Aha! There you are! Oh, what? 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 This city? is wild. Too wild, as it turns out, for my PC as well as many others. It was finally time for the infamous performance issues to rear their ugly head. Simply being within a certain proximity of the city halves your fucking frame rate. On a good day. Atrocious performance and NPCs phasing in and out of reality aside, I decided to press on and explore the city a little. As usual, nobody seemed too fussed about us taking whatever our five finger discount allowed for, though as long as I'm its ruler, exempt from the rules of having to share my toys like a good boy, I'm all for it. Like the little rambunctious scamp that I am, I decided to push some boundaries and see what this nation's etiquette allowed for. Can I just pick stuff up and throw it? Hey, does anyone care if I do this? Excuse me, child. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Hello again, Flora. Good to see you. Completely unfazed by taking a hunk of chunk of pottery to the face, the gremlin turned out to be none other than the gremlin we'd met in the previous village. Small world. We explored for a while longer, taking anything that wasn't nailed down before bumping into the gremlin's grandfather. Well met, sir. Being rewarded with a 20% discount for what I can only assume was knocking some sense into her. Not bad. But as the soon-to-be ruler of this here region, I don't see why I really needed this. It also appears that our little mischievous habits were rubbing off on our boy Steve. Steve, that's stealing! I'm sorry, he's not a house stranger. They grow up so fast. 